Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder All Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about tornadoes, hurricane watches, as well as a major flood risk. So if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. This is uh, your Tuesday, July 6th hazard update. And man, we've got excessive heat warnings and heat advisories for much of the Pacific Northwest out here in California where they've been really warm, if not hot, and record temperatures pretty much all summer long. That just continues out here into uh, portions of Oregon, as well as Idaho, getting into Nevada, California, and to Utah. But we also have flash flood watches down here in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, down here in the deep South Texas. And there's uh, Elsa that we'll be talking about as a tropical storm and we also have portions of hurricane watches uh now in effect for portions of florida as well as flash flood watches but we also have got some heat advisories up here into the the northeast and along uh, pennsylvania new jersey uh and right along the i-95 corridor where they've been experiencing some really hot temperatures uh as of late so let me show you the overall outlook for elsa this is the latest advisory from the hurricane center it is moving at 10 miles an hour so this has drastically decreased from 31 miles to 14 to 12 now only moving at 10 miles an hour it has crossed over cuba it's in the western gulf and it continues moving off north northwest and it's got maximum sustained wind at 60 miles per hour and the latest advisory doesn't actually make it take it into uh, landfall until sometime tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon so it still has another 24 hours to 36 hours over water to continue possibly strengthening it does actually take it up to a 70 mile per hour formidable tropical storm so it's right on the cusp it could easily be a minimal cat one hurricane and that's why they also have uh, hurricane watches down effect for portions of florida this will continue taking at that northeast turn and taking a, a, a continue to remain a tropical storm until it gets downgraded as a depression by the time we get into uh, thursday morning but it actually could reform again back into a tropical storm as it comes off the coast of the carolina and you can see by friday morning it's pretty much offshore off the jersey shore with uh, tropical storm force conditions as this races off uh, to the, into the northeast by uh, Saturday morning. So let's expand the view and look at the history of uh, Elsa. It formed way out here in the, the main development region, which was very unusual for this time of year. Uh, it became a storm and then it also became a hurricane out here by the Lesser Antilles. That's where it maxed out at 85 miles per hour. It continued moving off northwest and it got in, had some uh, mountain interaction, but it got seriously close to the island of Jamaica, and that's why they had a formidable storm uh, for the island, and that continued across the Caymans. It crossed over Cuba yesterday. Now it's back out into uh, the Gulf of Mexico, again, possibly trying to reorganize again as it has another 24 uh, to 36 hours, again, over water. So if we zoom in, you can definitely see uh, the latest update as of 10 o'clock, they had a wind gust out in Key West of uh, 51 miles an hour. I think I saw a report it maxed out at 60 at one point. But yeah, you can see the outer bands are already getting close into the Key West area, into the Naples area. This will continue uh, lifting off and kind of hugging the coast. And everything's on that east side, which is the dirty side. And so uh, it's going to be, you know, making an impact on the on the west coast of Florida, raking breaking along the coast, dumping some very heavy rain uh, along the way. So as we take a look at the overall rain, yeah, so places into Tampa Bay, into Sarasota, that's where they have a moderate risk of excessive flooding uh, starting today, going into the early portions of uh, tomorrow as the storm is nearby. And as the storm continues lifting off into the northeast uh, by you know closer into the evening hours that's where they have jacksonville into savannah as well as into charleston south carolina under that moderate risk but pretty much the entire state is going to be seeing some heavier rainfalls with uh with elsa on in florida and this will be hugging the coast into uh, augusta into the raleigh durham area as we go into uh tomorrow morning and as we get into 
Friday morning, it will continue being off the coast of the Carolinas. It's only moving at 10 miles an hour. So it's going to bring in a major flood risk along the way, but it's also going to bring some tornadoes. In fact, uh, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted where it's possible tornado watch uh, in and around this area, right as along the coast. So where this where it's situated, yes, it's a prime capability of producing these fast moving tornadoes. Now, some of these, you know, are in the EF0 to EF1 type nature, but these come with little to no warning. So not only are you going to be dealing with some of those heavier winds, but you could be looking at isolated spin ups of tornadoes is easily uh, not out of the question with this threat right along the coast uh, in and around the Fort Miles area into Tampa on the western side of uh, Florida. So definitely be on the lookout for tornadoes as a tornado watch is uh, pretty much going to be effect any time now if not it's already activated uh from the, the storm prediction center so you guys in tampa and to st petersburg in and around the orlando area into clearwater that's your main area focus for that tornado development later on this afternoon into the overnight hours but even into portions of jacksonville even to miami is not out of the question almost the entire state is under the gun could see a tornado uh, threat from Elsa as this will continue uh, getting closer off to the coast. But another aspect from this storm is the storm surge. Not only did it increase from a two to four feet or, you know, earlier, now it's up to three to five feet in, in and around the Tampa Bay area. So that's where they feel like it's going to be the highest storm surge. Now, granted, this storm is moving north, northwest, and it, they flow counterclockwise. So that's the concern. As this swings around, it'll push the higher surge up into uh, the Bay Area. So that's where they feel like they're going to be seeing the highest storm surge. But it also may come at a time where it could be close to high tide. It's supposed to be in and around this area by tomorrow morning, but if it slows and it's only moving at 10 miles an hour, it could definitely be where they have the highest storm surge getting in and around the center of it, closer to the high time area, high tide time frame. So that's gonna be adding to those totals as well. It's not factored in here. So it's definitely a huge concern right along the coast of that inland push offshore with those 30 foot waves offshore will be driving those uh, heavier rains and that wind along with that tornado, that storm surge along the coast could be looking at some floods right along the coastal regions of, the, of those areas. But if we expand the view and take a look at the overall aspect for the entire United States, we've got that dominant ridge. It's been just, just relentless for the Pacific Northwest and much of the West where you've been high and dry. You can't really buy a drop of rain that continues. Uh, we do have a boundary where we do have a little cool front that's going to kick off some uh, stronger storms today into portions of uh, Minnesota as well as of Wisconsin. But we also have that huge flood threat with a uh, with a boundary coming down. We also have remnants of 95L. That's going to set the stage for some serious flooding uh, into portions of uh, Corpus Christi, getting down into the Rio Grande Valley area. There's your uh, storm of Elsa coming coming you know coming ashore. But also we could be looking at some severe weather for portions of the Northeast. Uh, later on this afternoon. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted a slight risk for severe weather for portions into New York, getting into Philly, into Boston, into Tampa, into uh, New York, uh, New Jersey. So definitely be on the lookout for those stronger to severe thunderstorms with damaging winds, some, some quarter size hail with these, and, and then an isolated tornado is not out of the question, but your main tornado threat is gonna be along the coast into uh, Florida, but there's also a section out here into uh, Montana and in and around the Billings area and the Great Falls, Montana, where they could see some, uh, you know, stronger storms uh, later on this afternoon. So definitely be on the lookout for that if you live uh, in those areas. But ironically, here's the latest uh, maximum wind gust from the European model. Now, earlier on in the system, the European was not on board with Elsa at all. In fact, just the last day or two, it has drastically tucked, did a 180 flip, and now it's almost the most bullish model out of the out of the bunch. And it actually puts it into a, a possible hurricane again. Actually, increases it up to an 80 mile per hour right off the coast with wind gust upwards to 100 
miles an hour. So yes, the official forecast is to take it up to a 70 mile per hour tropical storm. But yeah, it's not out of the question. It could raise another five, you know, five uh, miles per hour to be a, be a hurricane. The Euro officially has it right now as an 80 mile per hour uh, hurricane coming ashore. Uh, but it keeps the winds pretty strong. It, it All the way through uh, Georgia, all the way through the Carolinas, going up off the shore. And it, even if when it comes offshore again, it redevelops into a tropical storm and, and if not a formidable tropical storm off the coast. So this could be a huge threat. It just, it's the, originally the front was gonna be a huge concern with this, but since it drastically slowed down, it's this Tuesday morning. And so originally it was already supposed to be making landfall now. So since it's only moving at 10 miles an hour, it's drastically changes the path over time. So now it's gonna be affecting more inland region than when originally it was going to be out to sea well out here by then now it's going to be in fact in uh the majority of the east coast so this is going to be packing a major punch all along the way of the east coast as we go throughout the week and this is where it could possibly be by the go while we go into friday evening right off the coast of uh, cape cod here with packing a punch or some formidable uh, tropical storm force winds so if we take you back to Wednesday and give you the overall outlook where uh, the setups are gonna be, yeah, there's that persistent trough and the remnants of 95L. We've got those flooding rains along the south coast of the deep south of Texas into the Rio Grande Valley, into the Corpus Christi area. Those areas are gonna be under the gun with some very heavy rain. You're also gonna be picking up some pretty good totals into southern portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. There is Elsa possibly coming ashore, getting close to shore by the time we get into a Wednesday morning time frame. But there's also going to be a good section of the boundary, a good swath into Kansas, into uh, Nebraska, going into Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, into Upper Peninsula of, of uh, Michigan. Here could be, pick some up some heavier rains as we go into the day on Wednesday. On Thursday, it doesn't really change that much. This this area just kind of sits and spins all week long adding to those flooding rain totals with areas that don't really see that much rain over a year's time span so these are definitely flooding rains and a huge concern for this region down in the deep south texas there would be elsa coming ashore by tuesday morning uh, thursday morning it'll be should be in and around the savannah georgia area uh by then packing some tropical storm force conditions with some very heavy rains that's where they have that moderate excessive risk for excessive rainfall for them uh but then also into uh you know into the ohio valley into indiana you could be looking at some scattered uh to stronger th thunderstorms uh throughout the day so as we expand the view and go to and through uh, Friday morning, there's Elsa that will continue lifting off the shore. It could be off the coast again, possibly re back developing into a tropical storm, taking advantage of those uh, waters again, as this could be off another st a tropical storm off the coast of the Jersey shore, as this will be lifting back into tropical storm forest conditions right along the coast. So some definitely some heavier rains and along the uh, 90, I-95 quarter as we get into the day on uh, Friday, but there's that persistent uh, rainfall down in the deep south where yes, they're gonna be looking at some serious totals uh, throughout the week. As we get into Saturday morning, uh, by Saturday morning, this could be off the coast to Maine. So this stays al alive for a, a good period of time, pretty much all week long, we're gonna be dealing with Elsa and its remnants of any some form of Elsa uh, with some heavier rain starting to creep into uh, the portions of uh, Portland as finally they start to somewhat dry out uh, for uh, the deep south into uh, Texas. But the major story out west is going to be your persistent heat. And if not, going into the weekend, some of these totals are getting, getting to be some crazy totals again. And the one teens plus, I mean, Death Valley could be approaching 130 degrees. So this is some serious stuff building back into the Southwest where triple digits remain into portions of uh, Washington and uh, Oregon here, even 107 uh, creeping back in into portions of uh, Idaho. So yeah, they've been dealing with some of that very excessive heat all throughout the week. And it even just gets hotter as we go uh, into the weekend. Uh, up for this upcoming weekend. But here's your some of your rainfall totals where the ridge is going to be firmly in place pretty much all week. It's high and dry. You can't buy a drop. Where that trough and the persistent flow of 95L, the remnants of it, 
yeah, we could be looking at almost double digit totals for the South Texas getting into the Rio, Van Gra Rio Grande Valley area. Places into Corpus Christi, easily four to six inches. San Antonio, Austin could be picking up some heavier rains. Much lighter amounts as we creep further northward into North Texas. But there's also that boundary where we have that kind of a stall boundary, that cold front, pretty much all week long, and then around into uh, the parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, uh, West, you know, Michigan, w Wisconsin here into Michigan. Yeah, they could be easily picking up a two to four inch swath, if not some isolated amounts of six inches. And then, yes, of course, right along the boundary of where Elsa is going to be. They could be packing some totals of easily, you know, four to six inches where it goes inland could be possibly six to eight inches. That's where they have those excessive uh, moderate flood risk and around those areas, especially as you go into the Savannah, Georgia area. But where that stalled, where that front is and that trough deepens, yeah, some of these totals into uh, upstate New York, uh, getting into Vermont, New Hampshire here. Yeah, you could be looking at easily another four to six inches as well. And these are totals all the way through, uh, you know, Saturday night, getting into Sunday morning. So definitely some formidable weather uh, to be dealing with for much of the country this week. So, uh, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.